Now, before moving on to talk about variables, let's just close the initial discussion about types, demonstrating one of the biggest differences amongst the types. Different types will have different operations that can apply to them. And in the case of strings, we consider that a presentation type instead of a calculation type. So if we try to use the plus sign with two strings of value 2 and two integers of value 2, let's see what happens. So here you can see that these strings are joined together and the integers have a mathematical operation happening against them. So this is your first practical demonstration of the differences between the types and that will be very helpful in the future. But now let's talk about variables. Previously, we've worked with literal types, which means that the values that we worked with were hard-coded into our program. Variables are pieces of data that may change during their lifetime. So we can store values temporarily that we can use and or change at another point in our application. One of the ways to create a variable is to declare its type and to give it a name. And the names should follow certain conventions that Microsoft recommends. And I'm not going to list each of these conventions here. I'll point you to Microsoft's documentation so you can read it. And the documentation also contains words and characters that are not allowed. What I do want to mention is that even though it's possible, Microsoft doesn't recommend that you create a variable without assigning a value to it. And you can do all of that in one line. For that, we're going to use the equal sign. And in our case, our integer will have the value of one. And by the way, the compiler wouldn't accept a string, a character, or any other data type value assigned to the integer. So you can never assign a different data type to the data type that you declared. So we call this technique demonstrated in the first line, initializing the variable. So let's quickly do the same to all our data types. And I'm speeding the video up. So I'm creating a variable for each one of our data types. And if you haven't yet, pause the video now and go read the documentation in regards to the conventions for naming. And notice here that all of our variables start with the lowercase character. And our last variable, the Boolean do we love to code, follows the camel case convention. The next step is to use the declared variables. So let's start with the index. And I will not declare a variable for each index. Instead, let's learn our first mathematical operation. And we're going to use the plus plus sign to increment the variable by one. So we are grabbing the integer index, which has the value one. And in each line, we are incrementing it by one. Then I'm replacing the hard coded values in our statements by the correspondent variables. So let's use a Boolean variable. And just to make things cleaner, let's get rid of the demonstrations with the number two and let's print our program. And we can see here that everything works well, except for one thing. The index didn't increment from the second line as we wanted. And that's because when we use the plus plus sign after the number, it increments the variable after the execution of the statement. So we can fix this by either having the plus plus in front of the variable, except for the first one, or we could simply add the plus plus sign to each statement. And maybe that's our first big example of the fact that there are many ways to achieve the same thing in programming and in C sharp. And oftentimes it comes down to the personal preference of the developer. And in this case, I'm choosing to have the plus plus sign in each statement after the variable. But let's move on with a quick demonstration of how we can reassign these variables at a later stage. So I'm going to copy and paste some code where I'm reassigning each of these variables with data about my mother. And if we run the app again, we will be able to see that the variables were changed. So those values after the dashes belong to the same variables. Now, before we finalize the first contact with variables, let's talk a little bit about manipulation of strings and different, more elegant ways that we can incorporate variables into strings. Right now, as we discussed before, we are using concatenation to combine elements into our phrases and blocks of text 
but there's a more elegant way to achieve this. So let's have a look. In the statement where the name is, the name property is, let's add a dollar sign and wrap the index property in curly braces. So we need the dollar sign, the double quote, and that defines a block where we can combine properties and text without the plus sign and without having to use so many quotes. So way cleaner. So if we compare the first statement with the second and the other ones, you can see the difference. And that's the modern way to combine variables with text. And we call this technique string interpolation. So if we run the app again, it works fine. So let's do the same for all our statements. So again, I'm going to copy and paste the code for that. And just as a quick side note, I'm going to take this opportunity where the code is not formatted correctly. Visual Studio has many shortcuts to speed up the development process, and I highly recommend you get used to using them. And I'm providing a link to some of the most important shortcuts in the video details. And the first one that I just used to select the entire block of code is Control A, and I'm going to use Control K followed by Control F to format the entire code. Throughout this course, I'm going to give you some of these tips. These little details, when they add up, make you a better developer. And I previously had said that we could declare variables in different ways. So let's have a look at another way. In the creation of my variables, I'm going to change the declaration of the types from the name of the type to var. But I can only use var if I assign a value in the moment of the creation of the variable. The compiler is able to infer the type by the value that it's assigned. And there is a lot of debate about which one you should use. But this is another one of those things that come down to personal preference of the developer and also the team that you are working with. In my first job as a developer, I was told that I should always use var. And in the second job, I was told that I should never use var. I personally like var because it makes the code in terms of readability a little bit more uniform, but it's totally up to you. And we call these variables implicitly typed local variables. And of course, when we run the program, everything works fine. And to finalize this chapter, let's learn another technique to manipulate text. Let's create a string. And this time my objective is to hold the entire text in one single variable. So I'm calling it my paragraph. And here I'm using the add sign along with the dollar sign and opening the quote. By doing that, I can print multiple lines of code without needing multiple statements. So let's demonstrate that by speeding up the video a little bit so you are not bored. And then I'll get rid of the statements. I'll leave just one with the my paragraph property and everything works fine again. So that was it. In this chapter, you learned two very important concepts, especially the one about variables and also about manipulation of text. And these are concepts that you will be using all the time from now on and very important building blocks in your journey to learn C-sharp.